I welcome Philip Mansell. Thank you. My name is Dr. Philip Mansell. I've written 10 books about France and the mixed cities of the Middle East. And this year I've published a short history of Aleppo. Aleppo, the rise and fall of Syria's great merchant city. Aleppo was called the epitome of the whole world in 1628 by an English traveller and I think it still is today. Today as the armies of the Syrian government, the Russians, the Islamic State are threatening Aleppo, they're about to pounce on the city. It's on the edge of extinction. Aleppo shows the vulnerability of cities, mixed cities in particular perhaps, but really all cities. If politics and economics go wrong, anything can happen, even in a city like Aleppo, which has five centuries of Muslims, Christians and Jews living together, English, French, Persians, Indians, Turks, Kurds. This went on until really yesterday, until 2011. Cosmopolitanism is an elusive concept. It really means cosmos, the world, in a city, polis. And Aleppo had many of the conditions for cosmopolitanism. The Ottoman Empire was a multiracial empire said to have 94 different races. And the sultans at certain times encouraged a variety of races because they thought it enriched their empire and made their rule more secure. Other great mixed cities of the Middle East tended to be ports like Constantinople or Smyrna or Alexandria. Aleppo was in fact 70 miles from the Mediterranean between the desert and the mountains of Anatolia, between the Euphrates and the Mediterranean. It was neither one thing nor the other and that's what made it special. It was really at its height around 1600 before American and other global trades took off. And it was really a, an amazing place. English merchants, French merchants, Venetians were there. There were Portuguese going overland back from Goa as 200 years later. A lot of British officers would also go overland through Aleppo to India. And one embodiment of this commercial spirit of the city was its legendary souk, which every tourist uh, fell in love with the moment they saw it, which sold perfume, spices, anything you wanted, more or less. And it was said that a blind man could find his way through the souk of Aleppo by following his nose and smelling whether he was in the souk of the perfume sellers or the spice sellers or the fruit sellers. Various proverbs became known in Arabic to sum up the trading character of Aleppo. Uh, uh, one Aleppo proverb was, if you do business with a dog, please call him sir. What is sold in Cairo in a month is sold in Aleppo in a day and so on. And All cities in the end depend on their armies and police forces. If something goes wrong politically, if the army is too weak or the forces of repression turn against the city, then anything can happen. Paris changed overnight in July 1789, St. Petersburg in February 1917 and indeed Aleppo after 2011. This peaceful law-abiding city became what is called hell on earth and Turkey has been backing ISIL Iran has been backing the Syrian government. Everybody has been funding and arming different groups. The collapse of Aleppo reflects its position and its history as a world city. It's on the edge of Syria, on the edge of Turkey. It's quite close to Iran, all these powers, and they all have an interest in Aleppo. And the refugees from Syria are dying in the Mediterranean. They're starving in Syria. It's the worst place in the world, Aleppo. And people shouldn't be complacent now. Aleppo must be saved. The refugees must be able to return to this city, which was once a model of tolerance and coexistence.